Ever thought of watching a film that's not just a few hours long, but could actually span across days or even weeks? Imagine sitting in a darkened room, your eyes trained on the silver screen, as scenes unfold not in a rush, but with a slow, exquisite detail that captivates your mind. The first such film, Logistics, takes you through every step of the creation and shipping of a single pedometer, in reverse chronological order. Yes, from the product reaching your hands, back to the raw materials it was made from. Imagine the journey, the time and resources it takes to get a product across the ocean. And then there's Modern Times Forever, revealing the decay of an iconic building in Helsinki over an entire decade. You might wonder, what's the rush? Why not sit back and watch the world change in its own time? And just when you think you've heard it all, we delve into. Ah, but we'll get there soon enough. Just sit tight and get comfortable, because we're in for a long, fascinating ride. Hey there, curiosity explorers. Ready for another dive into the unknown? I'm your host, Caesar, and joining me today is our well-informed commentator, Sonia. Hello, Curiosity Explorers. It's always a pleasure to join in on these exciting journeys of discovery. Absolutely. And remember, folks, to hit that subscribe button, leave your thoughts in the comments, and share the Curiosity Wonderland with your friends. Your involvement makes every episode more fascinating. Then, together, we can continue to unravel the mysteries of our world. So, picture this. The late 1990s, the film Titanic hits theaters. It's over three hours long, and everyone who watched it was amazed at how in-depth the film went into so many minor and secondary storylines. Talk about going down with the ship, right? Well, fast forward to 2023, and Leonardo DiCaprio is at it again with another super long flick, Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon. This film also had a runtime longer than three hours, and again, it both enticed and divided moviegoers with its long, winding tale. Whoa, three hours definitely seems a commitment. Oh, absolutely. But let me tell you, compared to some movies out there, three hours is just a drop in the bucket. Filmmakers across the globe have created movies that are, get this, way, way longer than three hours. We're talking about films that run not just for many hours, but for days. Days? That's quite the marathon. Oh, it's a marathon and a half. Imagine the commitment needed to watch them all the way through. Now, one such film is Logistics from 2012. The filmmakers, Erica Magnusson and Daniel Anderson, decided to trace the life of a pedometer, from the store where it was purchased all the way back to the factory where it was manufactured. It sounds intriguing but, how long is this movie? Hold on to your hat. Logistics runs for a whopping 51,420 minutes. That's about 35 days and 17 hours. No way. Oh, yes way. Can you imagine, you get to see how this simple, low-tech product made its journey halfway around the world, from its point of manufacture in Asia to its eventual sale in real time. It's a depiction of business of how retail goods are produced, delivered, and sold in the modern era. Quite the journey, wouldn't you say? I. I need to sit down. That's just a level of film commitment I can't even fathom. All right, brace yourself for the next one. This movie is called Modern Times Forever, and it was made by Finnish filmmakers Bjornstjern Reuter Christensen, Jacob Fenger, and Rasmus Nielsen. They decided to film the slow and relentless decay of an iconic building known as the Sugar Cube, the historic Stora Enso headquarters building in downtown Helsinki. So, we've gone from tracking a pedometer to tracking a building. What's next, tracking a city? Why not? Films are there to capture all aspects of life, right? Anyway, this movie lasts 14,400 minutes, which is exactly 10 days. The filmmakers wanted to show how a building like that decays over a very long period of time. It's about the roles of time and impermanence in public spaces. 10 days? That's a lot of time to commit to a movie. Indeed, but how about this for a plot twist? The movie's premiere was projected onto a gigantic screen on the side of the Stora Enso building itself when it was first released. Viewers could see the film in real time on the building on which it was focused. How's that for being meta? That's actually pretty cool. Now, let's move on to another long film, Cinematon. French filmmaker Gérard Courant began compiling three-minute-long vignettes of friends, celebrities, and random people around France in the late 1970s. 
Fast forward to three decades later, he spliced together those slice of life looks at people's daily existence into a very long movie. And how long is this one? Cinematon clocks in at 12,420 minutes. That's about 8 days and 15 hours in total. It's a video collage of the existence of thousands of people spanning from the late 70s through the mid 2000s. Wow, that's a lot of footage. And to think, each person only got 3 minutes and 25 seconds of screen time. Yes, but in those 3 minutes and 25 seconds, they were allowed to do whatever they wanted. It's a small but profound window into their lives and personalities. Isn't it amazing how films can capture such unique slices of life in all its diversity and complexity? It certainly is, although I think I'll stick to films that I can actually finish in one sitting. Now, on to another lengthy film. This one's called Beijing and was created by Chinese film director Ai Weiwei. Picture this, he mounts a camera onto a car and drives down every single street in the massive metropolis of Beijing. Every single street? Every single one. Main boulevards, highways, thoroughfares, side streets, back alleys. If a car could go down a street, Weiwei filmed it. The end result was a 9,000-minute movie, which is 150 hours, showcasing every street in Beijing from the perspective of a driver. Well, that reminds me of my childhood. I used to love road trips with my family. We would drive around Pernambuco, exploring new places and roads. Back then, I used to imagine that I was on a grand adventure, exploring the unknown. Little did I know that someone would actually turn that idea into a movie. It's rather incredible how films can trigger such personal memories, isn't it? Now, moving on to another film, untitled number 125, by filmmaker Josh Azarella. This one ran 7,200 minutes in total, or five days in full length. It expands upon one very specific scene in The Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Now, that's a movie from my childhood I can get behind. I must have watched it a dozen times. Let's delve into Azarella's film a bit more. This movie expands on the scene in The Wizard of Oz when Dorothy meets Glinda the Good Witch. Azarella imagines what might have happened had we seen more of Dorothy's journey with Glinda. What was just a six and a half minute section of the original film becomes a five day marathon in Azarella's version. You know, this reminds me of when I was a kid. I had this wild imagination. I would watch movies like The Wizard of Oz and then daydream about what else could have happened or what the characters might be doing when they're not on screen. I suppose that's the power of films. They spark our imaginations in the most wonderful ways. Absolutely, and speaking of sparking our imaginations, there's another long film titled Amriya Ekteth Cinema Banabo by filmmaker M.D. Ashraful Alam, also known as Ashraf Shashir. This movie, which runs for just over 1,260 minutes, or about 21 hours, isn't experimental and isn't an offshoot of an already existing movie. It's a traditional narrative movie, but it's 18 or 19 hours longer than most movies. 21 hours? I can't even begin to imagine sitting in a theater for that long. It follows the story of a young man named Kabir, who accidentally kills an ant and decides to seek repentance for unwittingly causing the death of an innocent creature. A vagabond man named Razak tells Kabir of his theory that everybody in the world is acting in films that are being directed by God. That's a deep thought. When I was a child, my grandmother used to say something similar. She would tell us that each of our actions forms a story that is being watched by the eyes of the universe. I guess, in a way, we're all actors in the grand movie of life. Continuing with the plot of Amriya Ekta's Cinema Banabo, the film progresses with Kabir and Razak's journey. A twist in the story happens when Razak tells Kabir about a heroine in distress who needs to be freed. Against Razak's advice, Kabir insists on rescuing the lady. This leads to a fight between the two, culminating in Kabir hitting Razak with a stone. Quite abruptly, the movie just ends. Ends just like that? After 21 hours of build-up? I remember a school play I was in when I was a kid. We practiced for weeks and then, on the day of the performance, the power went out halfway through. I guess you could say our play ended quite abruptly too. That's quite a memory. Moving on, we have another long movie titled Resin, also known as Le Voyage or The Journey in English. This film was directed by Peter Watkins and released in 1987, running for 873 minutes, or exactly 14 hours and 33 minutes. 
The Swedish-based documentary focuses on important issues like military spending by governments around the world and the problems related to nuclear weapons. That's a heavy topic. It reminds me of when I first learned about nuclear weapons in school. I remember being so shocked and scared, but it also sparked my interest in global issues. It's amazing how these topics can spark such interest and concern. The film includes interviews with civilians from various countries, discussing their thoughts on these critical issues. Now, moving to 2004, filmmaker Lav Diaz released another lengthy film Evolution of a Filipino Family. Evolution of a Filipino Family truly captures the essence of a struggling Filipino farm family's life through the years. With a total runtime of 643 minutes, or 10 hours and 43 minutes. 10 plus hours of a single story? That's a significant commitment. Indeed. It took Diaz nine years to put together all the footage. This movie becomes an incredible tale of one impoverished family's journey to survive across multiple generations. A true testament to resilience, no doubt. Absolutely. Then we have Shoah, a powerful film produced by Claude Landsman. This documentary focuses on the Holocaust, with a runtime of 566 minutes, or 9 hours and 26 minutes. Heartbreaking, but such an important part of human history. Indeed. Landsman spent several years interviewing survivors, guards, and perpetrators. He visited Holocaust sites across Europe, capturing the aftermath of this tragic event. It's a poignant reminder of the cruelties human beings are capable of inflicting. Lastly, we have Jaramillas by Lab Diaz, with a runtime of 519 minutes, or 8 hours and 39 minutes. Seems like Diaz has a knack for storytelling on an epic scale. He certainly does. Both of his films serve to capture the vast complexities of the human experience in a profound way. And finally, if you thought the storytelling journey was over, hold your seats as we dive into the narrative of Jaramillas. Another epic tale, I presume? Indeed. This story follows a man named Herenius, whose oxen cart is stolen. He embarks on a journey from his rural village to the city to report the theft and seek justice. But the journey turns into a saga of disappointment and heartbreak as he faces exploitation at the hands of both rural and city police. A tragic hero's journey, it sounds like. Absolutely. And what's unique about this film is its strong undertone of religion and faith. Diaz explores major religious symbolism throughout the movie while also shedding light on the disturbing trends of political and social corruption in Philippine society. So it's a social commentary wrapped in a cinematic journey. Precisely. And for those interested in finding the film, it's sometimes also known as Book One, Legend of the Lizard Princess. It's a testament to the power of storytelling and the lengths filmmakers like Diaz are willing to go to capture the breadth and depth of human experience. As we've seen today, filmmakers from around the world have pushed the boundaries of storytelling, creating cinematic experiences that last for hours, days, and even weeks. From a pedometer's journey across the ocean to a detailed narrative of a man seeking justice for his stolen oxen cart, these films provide us with a unique window into different walks of life. They say time flies when you're having fun, but with these movies, you might need to set a calendar reminder. That's right. These colossal cinematic experiences sure redefine movie night. Thanks to all our listeners for tuning in. If you found this episode fascinating, don't forget to blast the like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and share this episode with your friends. Let's spread the word about these epic movies. Absolutely. We appreciate your time and we can't wait to bring you another intriguing episode next time. Until then, stay curious and keep exploring. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Stay safe and take care. Our fascinating journey through some of the longest movies ever was inspired by an article titled The Crazy Stories Behind 10 of the Longest Movies Ever on Listverse. It was penned by Selmy Angulo and published on December 5, 2023. If you're interested in a deeper dive, the full URL is in the video description. Now, I'm off.